Just a little southeast of Nome Sam crossed the majestic mountains To the valleys far below He talked to his team of huskies As he mushed on through the snow With the northern lights a running wild In the land of the midnight sun Yes, Sam McCord was a mighty man In the year of 1901 where the river is winding, big nuggets they're finding. North to Alaska, we go north to Russia's own. Way up north to Alaska, way up north. North 
to Alaska to go north to Russia zone. Here we go, the upper Colleen. There goes Kirk. He's going to scare away the grizzly bear at the end of the runway. And that's a true story. So there goes Kirk. Welcome to paradise again. Upper Colleen, Craig is in the sheen jack. And as we landed, there was a grizz at the end of the runway and Kirk took a sharp right over his head to try and move him. And uh, the creek I'm gonna be entering is at the base of that ridge. probably needs a line a mile or two, but we'll see. So let's get our camp set up. This is called an alley on a runway. Just had a rain shower, it's about an hour and a half long, and I used the opportunity in my rain gear to assemble the canoe. Otherwise, I had my trusty chair, my three bags, gear, kitchen, and food, and my tarp to protect us from that rain shower. Nice spot, Upper Colleen, day one. Gonna go and try and find Camp One. Kirk recommended to go up near the ridge there or behind me, but there's no water. So I am going to make a camp at the base of the, rock, the hole in the rock down there along the creek. So I got water and I'll find a nice little camp on the gravel. And now we're going to try a kayak run that is a canoe on a kayak trolley down a runway. Uh, I think it's going to be the easiest to get out to the river and I'm pretty optimistic. But we'll see. I think it'll work. A little strip is helping and it's about uh, four times that, that length. But we'll give it a try. Always something new. I think I'll be going down the East Fork, but there's a lot of ice here with my fancy selfie stick. Look at that. It's all ice. Ain't no water to paddle here. So I walked one and a half kilometers to get here. Safe, of course. Bear bells, bear spray, bear horn. 
and that's about it so I'll be walking back have a nice lunch here and uh, enjoy it sunshine no rain can't be better over and out morning day three August 2nd it's uh, Monday morning uh, 8 a.m. caught up at 5 took me three hours to get in the expat mode that is organize everything get the canoe and the gear down to the creek I'm gonna have to line this thing but it'll work out just fine with my little trusty trolley and walking sticks I've made a cart so I've carted it down so I don't overload my back. But we're ready to go. Half hour, I'll be lining. Off we go. <laughs> same deep blue and oh Maggie if you'd only been true I wouldn't be here all alone on the river out on the river alone I close my eyes and I see you now broad brimmed hat on your smooth young brow Picture makes me feel so alone. Keith is lining his river today, and I'm doing the same with no lines. And oh, my bell, I ache for you. We tried and tried, but it wouldn't do. And since we put each other through, finally hit the West Fork. The rivers have now. Combined and I got flowing water. Yippee! Beautiful forest. Beautiful brook. Little class one here. Just went through two uh, class twos and hit nine miles an hour. So it's uh, fun. Better than hiking with a bum knee. So all's well, we're moving. Paddling with one arm, that's not too easy. The lunch stop. After the West Fork, we got enough water to paddle now. It's about uh, two and a half hours of lining in and out of the canoe. Not as bad as the uh, Naigu when I was picking up Craig. It was about a day, half a day, day. But easier than the Talikakila and the Shinjek with Brother Chris. Beautiful spot. River is about, I don't know, five, six meters wide. Flowing nicely. Crystal blue water. 12 o'clock noon. Heading down the street. Out on the river.
lunch break, second day of paddling. I've come down now 12 plus 16, 28 miles. But that's where I was, and Craig's on the other side of that slope. Hope he's doing all right, and uh, Chris is home. Pretty nice, sunny day. Couldn't ask for anything better. Willows reminds me of the Jean Jack, definitely, but sunshine. having to get in and out of the canoe all day and lying a bit, but uh, we'll see what happens. Very low water. No fishing. Good morning. Camp 3. Up on the river's edge and it smells like cottonwood. Wonderful, wonderful sweet cottonwoods. It's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. I wave to you. Up on the ridge here. And I just caught four grayling. I'm not preparing them for breakfast because I don't want to bother, but I'll let them go. Beautiful stretch of the river. I'm about 10 miles north of Hymo's upper cabin, according to Kirk. But uh, the river keeps going down. It went down another couple inches last night. I measured it. So see how today goes. We're going into the sweeper zone, according to Kirk. The next uh, 20 miles. 30 kilometers is all sweepers. So that's why I got up early, sunny, perfect day to do it. Never couldn't have got through there. So we're lining this one. I walk around here and line it. Day six, uh, August something, it's Thursday. We had the fourth day on the river right now and I'm getting tired of lining and going over gravel bars and gravel ledges. This morning I've been paddling one and a half hours. It's uh, the sixth one, but no complaints. Look at this weather, just spectacular. I repacked the canoe consolidated from eight bags to four because of the uh, the risk involved and uh, looking pretty good today little BB today butt break and uh, slept really well last night and it's a really nice spot reminds me of a big Nigu River just times the lining and the challenges with five or ten so, but it's uh, doing, doing really well. Temperatures 12, now the mosquitoes are back out. And uh, it's a wonderful day. Hope I can get down off of the Lewis Creek Junction, the uh, confluence. That's where the sweepers are supposed to stop according to the pilot. So it'll be more relaxing paddling. Everything's good, over and out. Um, six o'clock, camp five, and we're gonna call this one Haimo. According to the pilot, Kirk, he said that uh, he crossed off on the map. It was just west of this lake, and this is it. So tomorrow I'm going to meander on through the spruce forest. I'm assuming he's built this cabin in a spruce forest, which I think is 180 degrees behind me. There's my boots just drying out again every day. <clears throat> That's upstream. I got my line on, 
just for safety. I do not want to carry this canoe every day up and down from the river, so I bring it up on the bank, which is receding. And in there somewhere at the end of this bow, this right-hand turn in the river, according to uh, characters of cabin. So Camp 5, Haimo. I've shaved and brushed and eaten and got the tent set up and I'm feeling pretty darn good right now. There's my kitchen and another thing according to Kirk because this is against all rules. There are no bears around here. Haimo has shot them all. I keep the ends out for the tie that binds because you're mine. I walk the line. Hey, this is what happens when you get bored. Waiting on weather, it poured all last night. Maybe 12 hours of rain. Started at uh, 9 o'clock, stopped this morning about 9.10. I went for a long walk, looking for Haimo's cabin on the both sides of the river. Couldn't find it. Had my bear sprite, my bear horn, and uh, was safe enough. GPS. In reach, map, compass. Anyway, I thought I'd show you my snore box. This is what happens when you get bored. Uh, behind me, I guess, is my hat drying, socks drying, uh, gloves drying, sunglasses, thermometer. And then beside me is my trusty pee bottle. Tums if there's a problem when I'm paddling too hard and I get heartburn. And I'm charging up my camera, charging up uh, the inReach. The lithium solar powered battery is just fabulous. Tent bag ready to go. Something to read, just my office, journal. And of course done my uh, maps and marking up all the maps and the plans for the day. So uh, I'll be up tomorrow morning. It's supposed to be minus one. So tomorrow paddling will be probably about one plus to three plus C. So fingers crossed, we have a good day without too much wind and rain tomorrow. tent under this tree in honor of this big monster grandfather that won't give up good luck further on in life weather just cleared a bit it's in the evening just as an example I'd like to show you the wide mega Colleen at its best it's probably about a meter deep a couple feet and a hundred times a day you get into these situations here where you take the left fork right there obviously it's going to go behind that bank and get blocked or you take the right fork which is 10 centimeters deep five inches typically it'll dump down about two meters ten feet Class two rapids to a 90 degree, 120 degree turn, and you got a spruce tree waiting for you. This is a nice one, of course. That's why I wanted to photograph it to show you an example of what these sweepers look like. As you see, they're all along the bank there. But I've already scouted it. It's no problem. There's about a 10, 12 foot wide path, a couple meters path, paddle on the right. No problem. This is typical. 100 times a day doing this. 
That's the creek, confluence, and I just came from that little giant creek called the Colleen. It's unbelievable how it varies from 3 meters, 12 feet to 30 feet, you know, 10 meters. It just is astounding changes. With the rain the last couple days, the river is up. I measured it this morning. It's up about uh, two, three inches. So that might help. And I've had only one lining today, one speaker. So I think we're done with it, thank goodness. And uh, everything's good. Just had lunch, 12.5 miles, 20K this morning. So I'll make a progress. And uh, back in the canoe my radar in the stern. I'll show you uh, Camp 6. It's Saturday night, um, something August, don't know the date. I put my fishing rod back together. It's been packed down for the last three days because of the sweeper risk. Had it all tucked away. Didn't want to break it. So this reminds me of actually two-story camp in the uh, Colville, Craig. Two different levels. Uh, as I said, Saturday night, I did my weekly cleaning, including hair wash three times, ears, behind the ears, and on one cast with my rod, I got a grayling. Ha ha. So today was... Lufut and Fiske Super with grayling. Yummy! And then, that's the first story down here. The food, the kitchen, everything. Then up that little trail, I'm going to show you my new kitchen tent, which I'm going to try and use as a sleeper. So now I'm up about three meters. That's upstream where I came from. 22 miles um, 35 36 kilometers today and the reason I did this camp site here with the tent is to try and get some shade so this is my new kitchen tent four men I'm gonna sit in there and do all my journals bug net tarp should hold because there's no wind tonight otherwise everything is drying out my tent dried out because it was wet the last two days and uh, sundown is behind me. Sunrise should be up there, so it should be nice. Dry out the tarp. So I positioned it to get shade and morning sun. Have a good evening. Good night, Saturday night for those in Norway partying in Knaven or in Rennesøy. Have fun. Bye-bye.
bad time You tried to hurt me But now I know Sunday, I made my goal. Here is Boulder Creek. That's the Colleen right there, the mega huge Colleen. That's a joke. Panorama here. I was interested in Boulder Creek because this is where Bob Hart from was featured in the last election. Last election. Name this place the throne. He used to sit up there. Or maybe up there. But I'm you know, finding a camp here, but Boulder Creek is not flowing, so I just don't get it. The water levels are so low, just incredible. That's where I came from, Colleen. It varies, as I said, just a couple of meters to 10 meters. Four times today I had to get out and lying across uh, gravel ledges again. So it was a long rough day actually, but beautiful afternoon. It turned to sun and it was just nice paddling basically. Nice to get out and stretch the legs and anyway. So. But here we are, Boulder Creek. I'm gonna try to find camp on the inside of the bend over there. Some bush. Somewhere in there. Give it a try. Here's Camp 7 in the shade of some of these white spruces. Important on a day like today. It's been sun all afternoon and now it's really warm. So I want to pick a shady spot up on the Bank above the gravel. A quick preview here. I am at the Boulder Creek in honor of Bob Hart. I wanted to camp here. Drying out boots. Should have named this place Peregrine Falcon Heaven. There's either two or three pairs and they're fighting. Ever since I came here, they've been dive bombing each other. Through the cottonwoods, smells nice. And this bend here where Boulder Creek comes into is really nice and deep, so there's going to be lots of grayling there. There's the throne up beyond which is the, uh, the dry Boulder Creek. And I can't see where the peregrines are right now. But uh, there's my canoe and camp kitchen down here. And then further downstream, I'm not sure if that is the another location where there's a sitting viewpoint, but I'm not going to spend time doing that. I don't have the, have the trust in myself, believe it or not, and leaving everything behind, especially after this morning's bear encounter. More about that later. It was not fun. First time in my life I have had to release bear spray against a bear so that was not fun persistent bugger over and out We're gonna have a nice grayling dinner
lunch stop on Monday. Day 10, I get to open England's package tonight. 17 miles. And uh, eight linings over gravel ledges. They just don't end. This river is, although it looks from here, it's just flowing nicely. Every 10 minutes I have to stop. Go over a ledge. No water. Have a nice day. Uh, this is uh, lining number 10 today. The mighty, mighty Colleen. Water is just too damn low. So I've walked down here looking for a channel that's deep enough. Can't find it. And uh, this is what the, the issue is. And then typically you come across these, these gravel ledges. And then along the bank, you can normally paddle, but this one, no. So this is number 11 today. Very small ledge. Sometimes these things are, you know, one foot, two foot, three foot high with drops. You got to find a channel to get through, but uh, this is a killer. This water is unbelievable. Kirk warned me it was low, but uh, didn't know it was this low. Trudge on! long day downstream day 10 is when I get to open Ingen's gift so I'm going in my tent to do my gift opening journal arithmetic map reading I found the 9.9 .9 out of 10 criteria campsite calling it yellow bluffs it's a beautiful spot took me a while after 30 miles canoe tied in flat ground serious hole in the bottom of the canoe today I had uh, one to two liters per hour leak upstream the mega Colleen and then the gear is all set for the night with my bear banger on top i.e. my cup tarp weighted down foods up there Fishing rod ready for the morning and my tent not too far away, but I'm just too tired to move it further up and it's windy slightly no mosquitoes Good night Pretty noisy here at the Yellow Bluffs Inn First squirrels ducks geese Oh, oh Uh, lunch break day 11 panorama that's downstream upstream really interesting bend with some very interesting colors and rock formations don't know what it is maybe bayrite I don't know it's gray and yellow again a little bit of that yellow from last night at yellow bluff Inn. Um, I think it's peregrine making noise and uh, lunch break Standard bacon oost connector bar. Good stuff. And just saw an osprey on the other side of this gravel bar. White, smaller than an eagle, larger than a peregrine. Very nice. Uh, just had half hour of rain, so I'm in rain clothes. Hopefully uh, it's over for the day. Trudging on. Tomorrow... Porcupine River, the last of the blue-green turquoise crystal clear 
Colleen River. Uh, Camp 9, Tuesday the 10th. A view upstream. Say hello to the folks. Keep going. My boring kitchen tonight. I'm pretty tired. 25 miles. We had a number of butt breaks today. You see, there's the Mega Colleen. Colleen is uh, braided and braided and braided. Even here, 150 miles downstream. So that's where I came down today. <clears throat> down from the Yellow Bluffs and because of the wind pretty strong wind east to southeast I found this little cotton uh, wood grove uh, cottonwoods willows in an absolutely perfect spot I'll photograph it in a minute good night all right it's bedtime kitchen's all packed down and ready for the night and inside this Cottonwood Grove, which is the name of the camp. There is an unbelievable tent spot. So if we just meander on through the cottonwoods and the willows. It's just incredible, this spot. It's just made for a tent. It's made for Keith Roebuck's last evening on the Colville. Last meal, probably last lunch I had today. And look at this little gravel bed here. Middle of nowhere. In the middle, protected from all kinds of wind from all directions. So there's my abode. Bed and breakfast, here we come. Good night. Yep, just relax. There's my footprints before the last rainstorm. And that came after. That came after. It's my footprint already gone from the rain. Gone from the rain. That bugger went by my tent as I was reading The Call of the Wild not one hour ago. Strange things happen in the midnight sun. more hours and we're coming to the porcupine. Last morning on the Colleen.
going into a canyon here. Pretty nice. can do this what 14 days just float cruise with one hand and the paddle that's the advantage of being two one can film and one can do sightings and navigate film but, uh, going solo is also a lot of fun. Got its challenges. You miss this crystal clear turquoise water. I haven't seen a semi canyon like this that's got forest on both sides. Normally it's a gravel bar. And forest further in. Got slopes on both sides and forest on both sides. And of course the gravel bar here on the other side. Back to paddling before I had a sweeper. Traditional morning soup break before lunch to stay warm. I make it always at breakfast. And we are disturbing a squirrel's domain and a peregrine falcon. Somewhere in his woods there. We're just upstream the confluence. To the porcupine. Nice morning break. I've done eight miles. Started at five o'clock. I got up at three to avoid the wind and the rain. So far so good. Just light showers today. But uh, hopefully when we get down to the porcupine, we don't have any headwinds. That's the whole point. And then over to kayak paddling. All right, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Took a long time, but uh, we're at the porcupine. It just stopped pouring rain. It's been pouring rain basically for the last 90 minutes or so. Uh, down river pork. It's a lot smaller than I thought. But uh, here we are. Saying goodbye to the Colleen. A little chilly after being in that rain. All right, next leg of the journey. See how far we get before Kirk picks me up and uh, rendezvous in Fairbanks with Brother Chris. Looking forward to that. Free as the wind blowing down the 
lucky cause I know what you've done Not a care in the world, not a worry in sight Everything's gonna be alright cause you're the lucky one You're the lucky one, always having fun A jack of all trades, a master of none You look at the world with a smile and eye And laugh at the devil as his train rolls by Give you a song and a one night stand be looking at a happy man Cause you're the lucky one Well you're blessed I guess By never knowing which road you're choosing To you the next best thing To playing and winning is playing and losing You're the lucky one I know that now Don't ask you why, when, where or how You look at the world through your smile and eyes Give you a song and a one night stand And you'll be looking at a happy man Cause you're the lucky one Six AM It's too noisy outside. I don't know if you can hear it, but all night long. I think I'm going for my uh, fourth waiting on weather day. Cares. I'm on vacation. Go fishing. Going back to bed. To you, the next best thing to playing and winning is playing and losing. You're the lucky one. I know that now. Don't ask you why, when, where, or how. No matter where you're at or where you'll be, you can bet your luck won't follow me. Give you a song and a one night stand And you'll be looking at a happy man Cause you're the lucky one Did I wake you up? What's your problem? Don't try it, bud. I'm not going upwind. Huff and puff. Sorry I woke you, dude.
just keep on walking, because that was my camping spot. You gonna cool off? What the heck? Well, you just do your thing. Oh, you huff and puff all you want. Oh, you smell me now, eh? Well, I guess I ain't camping there. You go ahead and take it. I'm gonna paddle upwind and then you can skedaddle. Adios. Well, I made it to the other side. It's true. I was coming around that uh, bend there because I thought I would make a camp there because there were trees to get out of the wind and then it was gravel not sand and that guy was sleeping I yelled at him to wake him up I think this can't be a dead bear so now look at him he's trying to dig up the roots oh maybe he's got a kill oh that's why he's going back no? Oh, he's poking away at some roots. Back down to the water side. Maybe it is a kill. Goodness me, I, you know, I think it is. That was like the worst place you could ever imagine, Mr. Roebuck. You do not want to get anywhere near a kill because they're very protective. Goodness me. And he was sleeping probably after uh, devouring what he could in the first round. Oh, heck yes. He's patrolling it. Well, suck it up, man. Gotta paddle more. It ain't easy with this wind. But uh, what a coincidence. I never would have been over on that side unless I thought it would be a camp. That is definitely a kill. Well, that's a first for the book. And one more encounter. Oh, goodness, it looks like a deer or a caribou maybe. You know, I think I'm going to latch up and get my binoculars out. Oh, God, look at that thing. Probably going to bury it or put it in the water because it's a little dead-end pool there. Either bury it in the gravel or put it in the water. Well, that's first, bro. I took the binoculars out, I docked here in the, the edge of the stream. He's trying to dig it down and there's a second bear. A little smaller and he was, uh, he's, he's beige. A little small, he's on the right. And it looked like, uh, I think a small moose. It's probably a calf. He's coming down to the water's edge now. So that was quite the experience and not the campsite don't know about these bear encounters on this trip I think I've had enough of them
But that dude was sound asleep when I came up there, and I thought, God, that thing must be dead. No. So I yelled, and he popped right up. And again, he didn't flee. Behavior. He did not flee. Jumping in the water at me. Was not normal. So this explains it. It's protecting his food. Now the big dude's walking away to the left. The little one, uh, the beige one, is coming back. Who knows what they're going to do. But uh, i got to find a new place. A couple... three four miles down suck it up man all right getting out in the afternoon here so problem is the wind keeps picking up picking up picking up all day long since eight o'clock this morning unlike the forecast which was it would pick up at noon so I'm fighting the wind with the kayak paddle there he goes into the into the cottonwoods and the willows But uh, we've got to close this chapter down and get back to paddling. Sorry, he coming back down. He's oh, he's gonna chase him away. Oh! Shad Craig's camera. Yeah, he doesn't like it. He is going to protect it until kingdom come. I think he went into the uh, the willows there to sleep, just like he was trying to sleep when he was rudely awakened by Mr. Roebuck. The little guy's coming back now. Stopped my tracks because of wind. Camp 12 has to be here up in the willows. I just cannot get any further away from the bears, the bear kill, just too much wind. So I'm giving up, throwing in the towel, impossible to paddle a canoe even with a kayak paddle. So. Uh, Tuesday, August something. This is day 269, something like that. I don't know, it feels like it. I've been waiting here, that's day 18. I've been waiting here four days and four nights on Kirk. Raining on and off, on and off, on and off, all day and night. So, keep waiting. Hopefully I'll get a message or something. It sure seems like he can fly now, but uh, who knows. I went down to the river to watch the fish swim by But I got to the river so lonesome I wanted to die Oh Lord And then I jumped in the river but the doggone river was dry She's long gone and now I'm lonesome blue I had me a woman who couldn't be true She made me for my money and she made me blue A man needs a woman that he can lean on 
But my leaning post is done left and gone She's long Day 19 Fifth day here Fifth, Five days and five nights Yesterday it cleared up at noon Clear all afternoon, all evening It was uh, no rain last night So everything's fine Still waiting on Kirk Day five Feels like 195 Drying my feet out, beautiful sunshine. I finished uh, packing down the canoe. Um, ready for lunch, it's noon. So, we'll see if I go into day six. Pretty frustrating. But uh, this place is getting to be well known. I've burned up almost everything on the gravel bar. But uh, I can still walk further. Hope it's not day six tomorrow doing this. Hope I'm celebrating with Chris in town. He's waiting for me. He must be uh, pretty tired as well. But uh, all's well. I'm dry. Sleeping bag's dry, tent's dry. Did a good job. Shaved, warm, everything's good. Plenty of food. Keith out. Guess what direction that is? Only one guess. And that is south. One o'clock, waiting on Kirk. There she blows! Oh, he's got his old plane. So why is he going to land? Came from the south, so that's a good sign. It's six o'clock in the evening. He's checking the runway out. Figured he'd be landing from the north because it's a south southwest wind. So hopefully he's satisfied. Because there ain't no trees and debris on this gravel bar. I burned it all up and cleaned it up. Yes, sir. Oh, he's smooth. He 
he's down. Glad to see you. I like to dream. Getting kind of old as a bear infested gravel bar. On the cloud of sun, welcome in the night. Any place that goes is right. Goes far, flies near. Goes far away from here. Well, you don't know what we can find. Why don't you come with me, little girl? On a magic call. One departs home to embark on a quest into an archetypal wilderness that is dangerous, threatening, and full of beasts and hostile aliens. This sort of encounter with the other, both the inner and outer, requires giving up comfort and safety, accepting cold and hunger, and being willing to eat anything. You may never see home again. Loneliness is your bread. Your bones may turn up someday in some riverbank mud. It grants freedom, expansion and release. Untied, unstuck, crazy for a while. It breaks taboo. It verges on transgression. It teaches humility. Going out. Fasting, singing alone, talking across the species' boundaries, praying, giving thanks, coming back. I'm trying to hold my breath Let it stay this way Can't let this moment end You 
set off a dream with me Getting louder now Can you hear it echoing? Take my hand Will you share this with me? Cause darling, without you The shine of a thousand spotlights All the stars we steal from the night sky Will never be enough Never be enough Towers of gold are still too little These hands could hold the world But it'll never be enough Never be enough Uh, just got word from Kirk that he's coming tomorrow. Might be Tuesday, I hope not. It's now Sunday, day uh, 16. And in tradition of uh, the last day before pickup, I, Chris Craig, we released the bear spray just to test it. And with that experience from thinking back, the first time I did it was with Chris and the Kogalic. It came out as a spray, as a fog, as a plume. And then I remember Craig and I did it on the end of the Togiak before we paddled into the airport. There again, it was shorter than I thought, shorter than the one we did in the Kogalic, but uh, it was also a cloud, a plume. Now my experience, unfortunately, from day four or five, when I had the bear encounter, that spray didn't go five, six feet. So I'm going to do an experiment now. I'm in my little alleyway. Here's my, my gear, my tent. It's not raining right now. I just took down the canoe. So in tradition, I'm going to release this can. I have two. And see how far it goes. So take a break. Intermission. Experiment complete. I released the bear spray for, what, the third, fourth time in my life. This was an experiment. This was scientific. It was a lull in the wind, no wind. I had my gloves on, rain gear. Not happening again, bro. Look at this. There's the bear spray manufacturer, never to buy again. It comes out in yellow clumps, a little bit of a spray, but clumps. And slightly downwind from this spot. It sprayed not even six feet. One, not even three meters from that point there to the can. Advertised at 20 feet. So that product reacted like I thought it did when I had that encounter. It didn't go more than five or six feet. So lesson learned, all bear sprays are not alike. Keith out. And in addition to the bear spray in the arsenal of bear weaponry, I do not have a pistol. I have bear bells, but I'm not hiking that much because of my knee. Uh, I do have something called the Frontiersman Bear Horn, which I use religiously. Now the bear would probably laugh at it if he came around, but I toot it when I get up in the morning. Doot, doot. And I toot it when I arrive to try and find a camp just to let them know that I'm around. So it uh, it's a good signal. It's much louder, of course, than what you can yell and clap and, and the noise that the bear bells make. But uh, let's give it a go. Close your ears here, folks. <coughs> Ouch. But it's better than nothing. And I think it's a good little 
you know, tool in the toolbox of bear equipment. Over and out. Change.